Are you constantly surrounded by smartphones, monitors, and tablets? For the majority of us, eye strain from overuse of computer has become a major dilemma, and studies have shown that eye strain and other uh, visual symptoms occur in 50 to 90 percent of users, computer users that is, and problems range from physical fatigue, uh, decreased productivity, uh, minor annoyances like uh, red eye or, or dry eyes, and, and really that's what I want to talk about today. Hi, I'm Dr. Lawrence Woods from The Spinery, and today we're going to talk with an expert who's going to give us some easy steps to reduce your risk of this new thing that's trending right now called dry eyes, uh, which is accompanied from prolonged computer use. And so without further ado, I'm going to bring on Dr. Bernadette. So here we have Dr. Bernadette, and Dr. Bernadette is an expert. She's, a, she's an eye doctor, a pioneer in the field of dry eyes. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through what this is, what this condition is, and why it's so prevalent today, and things you can do right now to treat this. And and by the way, we're in Florida. <laughs> if you're wondering where we are, how sunny it is, it's, uh, we're not in Ireland, we're in Florida, and uh, we're in a place called St. Augustine, which is the oldest country, oldest city, city in America. In, in America. Uh, it was founded in the 1500s by the Spanish, and it looks like a, a Spanish-European town. It's absolutely stunning. It's, the weather is just phenomenal. And we, uh, I welcome you to our channel, Dr. Bernadette, and here we go. So Dr. Bernadette, thank you for joining us today. Uh, the big question is, what is this dry eye uh, syndrome? It's, it's so prevalent today. Seems like everybody I know has this. What is it and what causes it? Well, thank you, Dr. Woods, for having me here, and I'm happy to be on your show. Dry eye syndrome is a situation where the cornea doesn't get enough moisture. Years ago, people had dry eye, but it's typically related to age, and women after 40, or medication. But now, with the advent of computers, more and more people are getting dry eye. How about children? And children especially. Wow. And so the technical term is computer vision syndrome. And basically, it's an overuse of our eyes on the computer. One of the first things you can do to help with this is to have your eyes checked. Go to your local optometrist and have them check your vision to make sure you don't have astigmatism or hyperopia or myopia. <laughs> For those who don't know what those terms mean, could you just uh, just briefly explain what the, each one of those three means? So astigmatism is the curvature of your eye and even low amounts of astigmatism even if you don't think you need glasses, if you have a little bit of an astigmatism, it creates a lot of eye work. And so that's the curvature of the eye, shaped like a football. Nearsighted means, theoretically, that you can't see far, and farsighted means you can't see near. Um, and there's, they're loose terms, but basically that's what nearsighted astigmatism and farsighted mean. So after you get your eye exam, you want to tell your optometrist the range from yourself to your computer. And the ideal work space is 18 to 22 inches. Yeah, so we usually tell people like an arm's length reach, yes. which, which would be some. That sounds simple. like a good, good measure because it's hard to have a ruler everywhere you are. So arm's length is perfect. And should they be looking down, looking up, or looking straight ahead? They should be looking straight ahead. Um, a lot of studies have said look down is better for dry eyes, but when you think about your neck and your positioning of your body, looking straight ahead will give you less neck problems and back problems. Is, would that be? Would you agree that that might be due to like a forward head translation, which would put pressure on the uh, on not only the nerves but the lymphatics and the blood vessels? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah the, the the body works together, but when you lean forward like this, you're putting a lot of strain on that neck, and so that's the number two complaint I get is headaches. So a lot of headaches come from or neck pain. Um, just our positioning in front of the computer. Sure, so it's affecting all of the same areas. Absolutely. Yeah. So that goes into the second thing we should do is take frequent breaks. After 20 minutes, you should get up, walk around. But if you can't, we, we do something called the 20-20-20 rule. And that means after 20 minutes on the computer, look at something 20 feet away or across the room for 20 seconds and make sure you're blinking quite often. Yeah, that, that's kind of interesting because that, that relates, that correlates uh, perfectly with the old uh, the Bates method. I'm not, I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, Dr. Bates. Yeah, Dr. Bates. Um, he was an ophthalmologist. Yes. 1940s, I believe. Yes, yeah. he was trying to formulate ideas where we could get away from glasses completely. Very interesting. Okay. Yeah, I saw, I actually saw uh, Paul McCartney doing on a YouTube video, he was doing uh, Bates method eye exercises where he found that he didn't need uh, glasses anymore from doing that technique. Very interesting. There's a lot of studies being done in that. Um, it's controversial, but I truly believe that if you do these exercises, you can reduce the need for glasses. Yeah, personally, I've, I've dropped, and you've known because you've been testing my eyes over the years. My my prescription dropped, oh, uh, 
in 50%. half. Yeah, yes. yeah, in half. Yeah, just from doing these exercises. And I'm not religious with these exercises, by the way, either. But I, I try my best. So the other thing you want to want to think about is the energy coming off your computer. And the energy is called blue light. When you say blue light, you're talking like in the range, uh, if you're looking at, there's scientific people out there, in the range between four and 500 nanometers, is that That's what you're correct. Talking? Yeah. So it's visible light at shorter wavelengths. And those wavelengths can actually penetrate through the entire eye. So you think about the, the light we have out here is called ultraviolet radiation. Ultraviolet radiation gets absorbed into the lens of the eye. This is a little technical. But blue light can actually pass through the lens and then it can actually do damage to the macula. And the macula is like the brain of your eye. And so when that blue light's coming off the computer, it can penetrate the eye and affect the macula. So later in life, people have to be concerned with macular degeneration. But you can do a uh, blue light filter on your glasses to block that blue light. And it also decreases that eye fatigue and the headaches. And there's also apps, I believe, that you can download, like Flux, F-L-U-X. We'll put the link down below for yes. people who want to see this. But the, on all your media devices, it, it sets to the, your all your media devices to the circadian rhythm. And as the day goes down, it starts reducing or diminishing the blue light. That's exactly right. Yeah. Blue light um, reduces our amount of melatonin. And so at nighttime, if your children are on computers, you really need to reduce their time because when you are on the computer, melatonin decreases when it should be increasing and so it's hard for them to sleep. So there's a lot of links between um, computer use and difficulty sleeping at night and increase in cortisol. So these things are really important parents, you know, really keep those children off after about seven o'clock at night, three hours before bedtime, computers should stop. Wow, okay, that's great advice. I, I read somewhere, I, 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 I'm, I, I'm so happy to have a doctor here who could maybe validate this, but I, heard, I read that 98% of ultraviolet radiation comes through the optic nerve, which stimulates the pineal gland, which, which produces serotonin, which then in turn makes us melatonin. That's correct, yeah. yes. So, so the sun is actually a, a good thing. The sun is a good thing, and so is blue light, but excessive amounts of it can cause damage. Right, so, so blue light in the morning is a good thing? Blue light in the morning is a yeah. good thing. And again, here we go back to the Bates. Bates said, uh, said this in the 40s, I believe. He said like 20 minutes a day with your eyes closed, let the sun hit your, your eyelids to stimulate the uh, pineal gland for yes. serotonin, melatonin production. That's exactly right. Yeah. So another thing you can do is, and this is very easy, but we never think about it, is blink. Um, when we stare at a computer, our blink reflex slows down. We blink every 10 seconds. And when we blink, our eye produces three types of tears, oil tears, mucus tears, and water tears. When we don't blink, those glands don't work, and then our cornea becomes dry, and then we get redness and burning and irritation. So blink, blink more often. Blinking is something that is not, um, we do it automatically, but when you're on the computer, it just slows down that blink time, so blink. Sounds easy, but it works. Okay, and another thing I, I want to ask you while we have you here is nutrition. A lot of people talk about nutrition, especially eye nutrition. Are there, is there certain foods that are, are good for the eyes? Or, or is there supplements you could take? Very good question, Dr. Woods. So nutrition is vital. Like, just like the rest of our body, we need good nutrition. But dry eye is an inflammatory process, and things that create inflammation are food sources. So sugar is a big one. The more sugar we eat, the more inflammation we have. The eyes aren't separate from the body, so what you eat affects your eyes. When we talk about um, macula health, where we talk about that blue light affecting the macular cells, it's really important to eat foods that are high in lutein and zeaxanthin. These are yellow phytonutrients that are found in yellow vegetables, and then you, it's hard to get them, so you can take supplements with lutein and zeaxanthin. And the milligrams you want are 20 milligrams of lutein and four milligrams of zeaxanthine. Another important thing to take is fish oil. You wanna make sure your fish oils are a pharmaceutical grade because there's a lot of impurities in fish oil, but fish oils are anti-inflammatory. Fantastic, and, and of course, we're gonna put these links down below for you so you don't have to stop the video right now. We'll, we'll, as usual, we always put these down below. So let's just recap about what we learned today. Computer fatigue syndrome. More and more people are having problems with dry eyes secondary to computer use. So make sure you get your eyes checked. Make sure you get glasses that have blue light protection. You can also get anti-reflective lenses because a lot of workstations have 
fluorescent lighting that's not good for our eyes, natural lighting is much better. Make sure you do the 20-20 rule. Every 20 minutes, look out 20 feet for 20 seconds. Blink, keep blinking. Blinking is in involuntary, but make yourself blink more often. Take breaks every 20 minutes. If you can get up from your workstation, walk around, that really does make a difference with um, dry eyes and computer fatigue. Hey folks, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did. It was great information. Hey, we're going fishing right now. Don't forget to bring, if you're out in the sun, uh, it's good to wear glasses sometimes to, to cut the glare, especially if you're on water. And, and Dr. Bernadette, anything you want to say? Nice meeting you all. Hello, <laughs> Dublin, Ireland. Goodbye, Dublin, Ireland. Ireland. We're going here. fishing. <laughs> we're going to catch some fish. I hope the weather's great over there. Thank you.